Welcome to the gallery at Lakeland Community College. We're going to do a video walkthrough of the current show that's in the exhibition. It's called From Woman, Roman Numeral, Numeral X. And this is work that was created by women, of women, and about women. Um, my name is Mary Erbis. I'm the gallery director, and I also curated this exhibition. This first piece is a Champlevé enamel piece, mixed media, also wood and paint by Laura Lee Hudson. Uh, Laura Lee Hudson is also sometimes a part-time faculty um, instructor here at Lakeland Community College. Here's a oil on canvas painting by Tricia Common. This next oil on canvas is our, our poster girl, Evie Zimmer. Evie teaches over at Tri-C East. We've got June Hund. A mixed media collage. This is a mixed media collage uh, trip to diptych by Susan Krauss. And next to that is a oil on panel painting by Sharon Pomales. This next piece is a quilt by Susan Shy. Susan uh, lives in Worcester, Ohio. And these are her journal quilts. And if you go to her website, Turtle Moon Studios, you'll see she's, her artist statements for these pieces are pages and pages long, because she tells you what she's thinking about as she's writing the text. And this is a very timely piece, because it's called Tipping Point, and it's all about the Standing Rock Sioux versus the Dakota Access Pipeline, and about respecting our water, respecting our environment. This next piece is a mixed media piece by Cindy Smith. And what's crazy about this, this looks like it's really heavy duty and um, maybe like fiberglass, but it's, it's a special kind of paper that she's painted on, so it's very lightweight. And I thought it was perfect to go in this room with all of the other pieces about respecting our environment and the air and the water and the plants and the animals. These next two portraits are done by Betty Skufka. Betty Skufka is an amazing artist. She's 89 years old and she paints every day. Not only is she my hero, my shero, she's also an inspiration to me. Now this next painting is Cindy Smith. Ironically, it was called Oil Slick. And how ironic that I would put it in the same room as the piece about the Dakota Pipeline, not realizing that was the title of the piece. And then here's a, um, a nine, nine uh, little pieces of hers put together in an arrangement, something as a, you know, a smaller um, pieces, uh, lower price points. We have an acrylic on canvas painting by Ro Clarkin. And then we have two lovely irises, oil on panel by Linda Merchant. And another painting of Evie Zimmer's called Moonlit. Here's Rachel Latina's painting, acrylic on canvas. And then these next two pieces are, one's acrylic on wood, the other is acrylic on canvas by Laurel Herbel. Laurel has a, a studio down in the West 78th Street complex. Here's an abstract kind of psychedelic trippy piece by Abby Zimmer who did the florals that was on our, in the other room and on our postcard. Here's an unusual point of view from Sharon Pomales. And then we have another piece by June Hund. There's a mixed media sculpture by Charlotte Lees. Another piece of Laurel Herbold. And then this is an unusual painting by Lane Cooper. Lane Cooper teaches at the Institute of Art. And if you squint real hard, you'll, under, you'll see who it is. And, and of course, the title gives it away. It's called Pipe, Pop Life, Ms. Twiggy. And then next to that is a bathing, a bathing Beauty. Here's another painting by Rachel Latina that's next to a painting by Sarah Curry. And what's fun for me is as you go, we go to the next piece to the right, which is another painting by Rachel, the fact that the patterns in Rachel's piece kind of echo the, pan, the, the 
patterns in Sarah Curry's piece. So it's fun as a curator when I'm designing the show to find these visual threads, these things that make it come together. And then we have a piece by Patricia Hecker. This is called Stronger Together, and I'm going to read the title, or the media. Constructed of resilience, patience, love, sweat, tears, fortitude, perseverance, forethought, determination, necessity, intelligent, conviction, and yarn. And she priced it at $20.17, which, which kind of commemorates the 2017. Here's another mixed media piece by Charlotte Lees. And a textile quilt by Sandy Schellenberger. Okay, here's another painting by 89 year old, years young Marvel Betty Skafka called The Pharaoh. And then we have three pieces by Gwen Waite. And these are uh, found objects assemblage. But I want to just take a couple seconds to, to talk to about this next piece, which, which is called Look at Me. And all these little jars, she's got little personal artifacts. She's got hair for, that's her hair, her children's hair. She's got flower lays that she had flown in from Hawaii for her children's uh, high school graduation. She's got shells and beach glass and even pieces, pieces of soap and pieces of you know, old toothbrushes. Um, beach glass, things that she's you know found along the way. There's even a little jar full of the little cicada shells from a couple years ago when they kind of took over and they were everywhere. So this is definitely this is a, a, a self-portrait of a different kind because everything that's in here has something to do with when or her family or what she's doing. And then the piece next to it is done by Diane Fleisch Hughes. It's mixed media on canvas. Here's a little bit of a psychedelic piece by Evie Zimmer. This image called Osiris Three kind of graces the cover of the Celebrate Women's History Month directory that I, that I created and compiled. I was able to organize the efforts of 86 studios and galleries throughout Northeast Ohio who are showing women's art throughout the month. You can go to www.lakelandcc edu forward slash gallery and you can click on the link and you can see all the different venues that are happening um, throughout the month of March. It's organized by the reception day so you still have plenty of time. You've got a bunch of things going on this coming weekend, the March 17th weekend, then the next weekend after that is the reception for this show. So there's, a, there's still plenty of time to see great art created by women in Northeast Ohio. Here's a painting by Trisha Common. It's a little bit different for her. It's a little bit more um, loose and relaxed. And I, I like the color palette, the fact that she was able to incorporate all those different colors into the flesh tone without it being too garish. These two pieces are Lorelei Skazenta. She has a, a store gallery over in the Rocky River called Devout Home. And these are assemblage pieces on wood and assemblage and mixed media. And then we have a mixed media assemblage piece by Ana Luisa Sanchez. And this has to do with, with Eve and the, the apple, and it's called Eva and Her Paradise. Here's two paintings by Sarah Curry. And I like how she uses the collage images to make a little bit more dramatic statement with her oil on panel paintings. Now these next four paintings are from the Nun series that Judy Takis Pendergast has been painting. You're familiar with her chicks with balls, but well, these are her nuns. The next four pieces are woodblock prints by uh, Marsha Sweet. And what's interesting about these are these are large scale wood woodblock prints. And the three to the right, um, it's, it's she's captured Louise Nevelson, Georgia O'Keeffe, and Gertrude Stein, which is so appropriate, obviously, for Women's History Month. Then we have four paintings by Diane Fleisch Hughes. For this from a series called A Thousand Stories. Okay, 
This case of ceramics is done by Cincinnati artist Terry Kern. She was actually an artist that I carried in my gallery in Chagrin Falls, and I'm so glad that she agreed to give me work for the show. I love the illustrative quality of her pieces, and the fact that she uses turtles as a plus, but what's crazy is that she brings in salt and pepper shakers that had nuns on it. It's called Sister Mary Salt and Sister Mary Pepper, and how ironic that I would have a series of, of paintings with nuns that would kind of coordinate with this. This is a apron that Susan Shy created. She, cre she did about maybe a dozen of them and wore them with her friends at the Women's March in Washington, D.C. in January. And it's hanging next to a quilt that she made that's, all, that's called Big Hillary. And it, was, and it was started before the election and then she continued it after the election, but it also includes images of, of Michelle Obama and Eleanor Roosevelt, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Madeleine Albright, Condoleezza Rice, Maya Angelou, Jackie Onassis, Rachel Maddow, um, Carolyn Robinson, um, all these, these women activists and, and powerful women um, in our country right now. And it also talks about, it also describes and, and defines what nasty means. Nasty to these women meant noble, aspiring, smart, tenacious, yes we can, or yin, or, or yin and yang. These next two drawings are, are, were created by Marilyn Zelay. These are charcoal on paper. Unfortunately, Marilyn passed away a few years ago, and I have the privilege and the honor of being able to show her work. She was very, very prolific, and as you can see, she was an incredible draftswoman. This woman, A, knows how to draw, and sure knows how to capture the figure incredibly. The next four pieces are an artist named M.P. Marion. MP was actually an artist we used to carry at American Crafts where I used to work, so it's kind of nice to come full circle and to be carrying artists that we used to carry and who I respected years ago. And these are large-scale acrylic and charcoal china white collage on paper. Here we have a glass mosaic piece by Lisa Rushman. And if you look at all the little pieces of glass, pieces, parts that had to be put together, it's called the moon on her shoulders and everything is possible. And then we have a large scale portrait painting by Tricia Common. What really intrigued me about this piece is the fact that she's wearing all white, sitting against white, and all the different color that, that Tricia was able to incorporate into it, but yet when you look at it, it still reads as white. These next few pieces are done by, created by Jamie Zentz. Jamie is my gallery assistant. She helps me install the shows. These are pencil oil on birch. She starts with birch wood and she says that the, the, the pieces of wood kind of speak to her as far as where the figure will be included. And then she, she brings the background out by adding the pencil and sometimes she'll add oil, oil paint also to it. It's just, these are some incredible pieces and I really enjoy her work. I told her she should also be a, fa a fashion designer because some of the clothing that she creates are pretty awesome too. And here's an unusual one. She doesn't always include images of fish, but this one is called Pisces with the fish and the way that they're, they're um, floating around the image are kind of, is kind of unusual for her. And this one's called Calypso. This next piece is a portrait by Stanka Kordic. Stanka Kordic, she's a, received her BFA from the Institute of Art and she's artist in resident at Beaumont School for Girls. And we have three paintings by Bernadette Glorioso. She's new to this collection this year. I actually have 16 new artists this year. And these are, um, painted on recycled fabric so you can tell um, with this first one you can see the patterning of the back 
and how she worked it into the clothing and painted over it and with all these pieces. It's kind of an, it's a challenge that she's using a, you know, a found surface, but I think she works it into the composition quite nicely. And especially this third piece where you've got the paisley of the figure and, the, and in the face and how it kind of melts in and out of the background and foreground. Okay, then we have five pieces, little pieces by Sharon Pomales, kind of, you know, of a, you know, a woman putting on her makeup and the mascara and all that, and I just thought this was a fun little series. And of course, this is the artist herself. And then next to it is another painting of hers with oil on panel. And then the last four pieces in this room, these are weaving, well, these are hand-woven textile weavings by Deborah Silver. And what's a little crazy about these is after she weaves them, she actually, she cuts them apart and then paints the edges. And so it's almost kind of like a, a reverse applique, like a mola. But for me, being a textile artist and a weaver, it, I can't even imagine cutting into the surfaces and then pulling them apart and, and um, accentuating the, the edges. So I think these are very unusual. And no one is doing work like this in this area that I know of. Here are four paintings done by A. Nancy Cintron. She owns the Good Go Gallery on the west side of Cleveland. What's kind of crazy about these pieces is she, she, we've got a bunny dressed in a dress. We've got birds dancing through the street. And then on the top right, who wouldn't want a raccoon selling you street food as a vendor on the street? I would. We have another Collage Mixpenia piece by Susan Krauss. And next to that are two collage pieces by, by Karen Koch. There's another piece of Susan Krauss. Next we have three prints that are called gum bichromate prints that are taken off of a di digital image. These are created by Becky Grasser, and Becky Grasser is an instructor professor here at Lakeland Community College. We've got three paintings by Beth Nash. These are acrylic on wood. These are kind of indicative of the style she uses with these collaged images and figures and animals. So the one painting has bunnies, the second one has, has uh, blackbirds, crows, and the third one has birds and a dog, and this one's called Dog on a Pedestal. And then we have a ceramic platter by Cincinnati artist Terry Kern. I think you're seeing a, a theme here. The next piece is with Crows and uh, Corn by Carrie Gortz. And then we've got uh, two ceramic pieces by Terry Kern, a platter, and then a ceramic sculpture of the bird. And the bird's holding a little packet of envelopes. And you can, don't think we can get close enough, but inside the nest is a little um, image of a bird. Then we have a picture, a painting, oil on plexiglass by Betty Skufka of a rooster. And she also paints the frames. We have three more pieces of Carrie Gortz. These are acrylic ink on enameled paper. And I love this last one on the end with the newts and the, the pattern that she creates. She should be she should be, be designing fabric. Okay, here's a painting by Betty Skufka of a turkey. I always encourage people to come to the show themselves because, you know, digital images, video can't capture the essence of these paintings. The brushwork that's involved in this painting is phenomenal. And like I said before, she's 89 years old. She paints in her studio every day. She's probably using a brush that's maybe one hair thick to get all those dots in there. And then she also enhances the frame. She added, it looks like she added sand to the, to the side of it to kind of give it a texture. Um, 
So it's kind of fun how she incorporates a found object frame into her paintings. Okay. These next two large scale pieces are done by Melissa Harris. This is fluid acrylic on paper. And they're flanking a lamp work bead sculpture created by Amy Greaves, who's from Arizona. And these are Italian glass. She actually did the, created the lamp work beads. Some of them are opaque, some of them are transparent. And she also incorporated some African sand cast beads. And I was with her when she, we stopped in a show at a, a gallery in Phoenix earlier last year, late last year, and she picked out the, the beads. So it's kind of fun to see how we went from the raw materials into the finished piece of artwork. Here's three, four more pieces, actually three more pieces, because one's a diptych of Charlotte Lee's, and she incorporates metal and paint and wood into her sculptures, and the images of the, the bees and the flowers and the uh, butterflies are kind of like three-dimensional, kind of like a little bas-relief. Same with these pieces, too. It's like a metal metallic material that she's able to um, kind of carve into and then paint into to accentuate the some of the shadows and some of the depth. And this last piece actually incorporates a piece of a pipe organ into her into the composition. We've got two exquisite paintings by Linda Merchant. This is a white a white peahen. This is oil on panel. And then next we have a fennec fox. Here's another charcoal on paper piece by Marilyn Zelay, and it's flanked by Kathy Rogers' little um, painting, acrylic on plywood. It's called God in Disguise, and that's her little critter guy, her little fur baby. Okay, this is two pieces of jewelry by Laura Lee Hudson. The piece on the left is a a uh, pin called Bee Eater, which is cloisonne enamel and sterling silver. It has an icon of a bird, and then the bee is next to it, and then you've got the imagery of the honeycomb behind it. And then next to that is a Limoges enamel, sterling silver with amethyst, which is a necklace with an um, enamel brooch, also by Laura Lee. Now this next case of jewelry is done by a Hudson artist named Dana Guile Ray, and this is a technique called chain mail. And chain mail is actually created one link at a time. So when you're looking at these pieces, every little link was added one at a time to make up the, the piece of jewelry. And on the label, we, we put how many links, how many rings are actually part of each piece. And I believe the most number of pieces was like, 844 rings on the, the, the middle piece on this top row. And she incorporates fine silver and sterling silver, uh, gold filled. She um, sometimes includes um, copper. Um, she's got some uh, borealis crystals or stones. But like I said, what's incredible about this is all the different patterns and designs that she can create using the, the individual links put together. And like I said, she builds it as she goes. And we finish up the tour of the, the From Woman X show with a piece by Jen Marie Zalesnik. The, uh, Jen Marie actually teaches drawing here at Lakeland Community College. And this is a piece in tribute to her little fur baby who just recently passed away. So it's kind of in homage to him. And then she's also including the star mapping in the background. And, and again, this is one of those pieces, if you could see all the intricacies of the fur that she was able to create, it, it's quite exquisite. So thank you for joining me on this tour. Again, the show is up through March 31st. Regular gallery hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. On weekends, we are open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
And I do want to invite everybody to join us on Sunday, March 26th for the reception. We collaborate with the Women's Center here at Lakeland Community College and they present their annual Women of Achievement Awards inside the PAC, inside the theater. That starts at 2 p.m. And then when they're done and they come out, we kind of join our receptions and we'll have the artist reception and their award winners receptions. Um, so our reception starts officially at 3.30, goes until 5. All of these events are free and open to the public. I hope that you can enjoy us, and thanks for coming along. Have a great day.